fact, most people don't think about caring for mom and dad until the crisis hits. They get the phone call, mom is in the hospital, uh, dad's had a stroke, and all of a sudden, what should I do, comes up to the forefront. Unfortunately, in many cases, if you waited that long, you don't have a lot of options. The problem is particularly compounded because in many cases, you get that call from another city or another state. Mom and dad aren't nearby, and somehow you have to deal with these crises. What you need to do, first of all, is contact a local area agency, a local geriatric social worker, somebody who can help you deal with this crisis. That's Jim Furman, president and CEO of the National Council on Aging. He knows that whether your support network is formal or informal, it's critical that you enlist the participation of a support network that can help you expand your time and energy in pursuit of helping your parent. This is part two of our Distance Caregiving podcast. A formal network is comprised of community-based agencies. An informal network is made up of friends, neighbors, and relatives. Living at a distance from mom or dad means relying on others for information and support, so your first step is to put together an informal support network. This is a group of people who know and care about your parent, people willing to help when called upon. Now, sometimes it isn't possible to create an informal network, so you'll have to concentrate on creating a formal network of professional caregivers. Your first call should be to the local area agency on aging, geriatric social worker Ann McKinley. One of the first things that you could do that would, would make you feel a little bit more in control is establish in your city a contact who may have information about the area where your family lives. Therefore, you have a professional person on hand who might be able to continue to work with you and help, help you understand resources. For example, every state is divided so it has area agencies on aging. With your own area agency on aging, they can help you make contact with the one that would be responsible for whatever services are available where your parent lives. And, and then that can become uh, a source of question and answer for you. As you build your networks, be in contact with each person in the network so you're clear as to what they're willing or able to do for your parent or for yourself. Ask one or more members of the support group to visit with your parent at least once a week and discreetly check around the house and observe your parents' appearance and behavior. Ask members of the group to share a meal with your parent or to see that your parent gets out of the house from time to time. In short, ask them to be a good friend and to call you at the first sign of trouble. If you find it difficult to establish a network from a distance, another option is to enlist the services of a professional care manager. Dr. Mark Kubik, a geriatrician, says, a care manager is most frequently someone trained in social work, but may have other areas of training who will help manage and coordinate the care for your parent. This person can be an invaluable resource if you're not living near your parent and want to organize services. Typically, a care manager service will cost on average between $100 and $200 per hour, but the peace of mind it provides is well worth it. You can find a qualified care manager online through the website of the National Association of Professional Geriatric Care Managers. Their web address is www.caremanager.org. They can provide you with the names of private care managers throughout the United States. This program was produced by AgingParents.com, which is solely responsible for its contents. Thank you for watching Distance Caregiving. If you need more help about distance caregiving, feel free to visit our website at agingparents.com. To watch more helpful videos, subscribe or watch another video. Also, check us out on Facebook or on Twitter. Thanks for watching.